Hey everybody, good morning. How's it going? Infinity, Sergio, Larry, Phil, Goose is in the house. Goose, are you still on the road? Pulled over? You just driving and listening. <laughs> Wait, John, Eric, Francois, Nifty, Thrifty, Nifty, Kenneth, Carlene, George, Ed, Merle, JB, Rollin, Craig, Cliff, Spinborn, Donald, Darren, Don. That's a lot of D's. D, 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 D. John, Michael, Jeff, Arturo, Mary, Gary, Gary Mark, Ted, Joseph, Zub, Ronga Murd. Glad you're home, my man. Alan, General Rush. Good to see you, sir. Keith, Jan, and Tenright. Looks like a new name. Glad to see you. Brand new to the stream. Rex, Marianne, Chris. Awesome. Glad to have everybody. And my favorite, Kimberly Turnmeyer, my lovely wife. Here. Oh, I should uh, set this over so I can put my drink up where you can see it. Drinking the Strawberry Dream this morning. Pretty tasty. Probably one of my favorite flavors. And welcome, everybody. Welcome. So... Energy versus tech. That's the kind of the, the teaser, right? Let me go over here. And we're going to change my screen. Go like this. And we'll turn off this one. And we'll go remove this. Check this out. Does JT have this chart prepared? No. Uh, for whatever reason, it wouldn't load. I did set it up, but it didn't load, so... Gonna change it to a line chart. We're gonna turn off the volume for now. We're going to compare against QQQ. Check this out. Big tech. Big tech's in orange. Look at this. Dun 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 dun. Look at this gap. Look at that. Look at that gap. Big tech underperforming energy. The beast. Look, they were on the same path here. And then one took that path while the other did that. Why is JT been hyped up on oil and other energy type things? There you go. I wasn't so sure about some of the uh, refiners, but they're running, running, baby. I didn't, didn't pick those as my horses. I kind of picked UCO, which is now just starting to bust out of the gate getting going so this is uh this is interesting how far can this keep going a long way baby you know we're looking at right now 20 percent year to date on xle xle like these x blank blank like xly xl you know xl anything they don't tend to like go on mega runs um uh, i don't know if you paid attention i mean if we were run rewind this back to the beginning of the year here and we're still you know kind of way up there we go back to the october dip i have to pan this out just a touch look at that off the lows from october qqq up there energy still lagging so energy has the potential to outperform but it's been outperforming since the low we made back here in january Coming up strong. So that shows you that energy being a strong beast this year. Tech had the head start on the rally. Energy coming back strong. It was a you know, energy started out strong last year and became an underperforming sector as we got deep into the year. And now it's one to keep an eye on. The ones that tend to be weak tend to turn into the tend to turn in the top ones or you know that not necessarily the top one but up near the top all right i brought one more chart interesting chart and i didn't i cold i hit the close button right before because i was a dummy and dun, 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 right here check it out this was yesterday actually or friday i guess monday tuesday right there that's what we are on this baby so what is this this is the blackout s p 500 this i've kind of been talking about this for a few days we're wrapping into this window where there's going to be reduced buybacks now what does that mean 
that means there's not buying pressure on the market from S&P 500 companies buying their own shares or executives or any of those other you know, big players, big money players. This can lead to a pullback. Could. It doesn't have to. Just It opens the door for the opportunity for a pullback and we don't get buying support. There's no... Um, typically, companies don't care about dips or anything like that. They just buy, buy, buy. It's just a program buy. But without that program buying there, the dips could get exasperated if we start down one of the dips. All right. So I just uh, throwing this out there as a cautionary tale, something to keep an eye on. That uh, you know, once we pass about the 23rd of April, basically the end of the month, we're back out in the clear. But right now we're kind of in this three week kind of cautionary phase here. And this is by market cap. All right. This is the size of companies by market cap. So that's why some of these won't, so this doesn't really slough off till after we get through most of big tech, and then we kind of ramp it back down. Remember what I was talking about yesterday is the, the number one company, Microsoft, Versus the biggest company, all right, that, that is the biggest company, versus the 75th percentile company. So we're talking about the top 25%, which you know, you'd think there'd be a bunch of money, but that like 800, what was it, 800x? I mean, just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Let me see if I even have that chart up still. Yeah, it's right there. This one right here. Yeah, 800x. Look at this. Microsoft versus the 75th percentile company, 800X. Craziness. Last time we were up here, it was a problem. So, just be careful out there. All right. Putting this back to regular candles. And nixing the QQQ. Jumping over to the disclaimer, all trading involves a substantial risk of loss. Past performance, not necessarily indicative of future results. Just because I got it right in the past, doesn't mean I'll ever get something right in the future, which would be a bummer, honestly, but such is trading, right? This presentation is intended to be informational, educational, fun, entertaining. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell any financial instrument. No stocks, no options, no bonds, no Forex, no futures, no cryptos, no treasuries. Don't long them, don't short them, don't trade them you may lose substantial chunk of money. Now, think about it. Every trade, there's a buyer, there's a seller, there's a winner, there's a loser. Every single trade, trying to help you get on the right side. But if you're not uh, not swoofed enough to take make your own decisions, don't trade with real money, all right? If you desire personal financial advice, you got to hire and consult a financial advisor. That's not what I do. In the calendar, the big warning of the week, CPI coming in hot. Tomorrow morning, before the open, right here, CPI. What do we expect? Hmm. I expect it to run hot, but muted. Um, there's there's a huge, uh, huge, big blah 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 on uh, X last night. I was looking at somebody calling out Zero Hedge um, for saying that for spreading a, a rumor that the the immigration, the unmitigated immigration is keeping inflation at bay. And Zero Hedge and uh, about nine gazillion people responded. It's not a rumor. Literally, Jerome Powell said it on uh, whatever, Dateline or whatever, whatever it was. Uh, I forget the, whatever the, whatever the interview was. Uh, Jerome Powell literally said it on there that, the crazy inflation is keeping all the employment numbers and the and I mean the crazy immigration is keeping all the employment numbers growing nicely. It's keeping you know it's it's pushing cheap labor into the markets. That's keeping inflation from exploding even higher than it than it should be. Um, so they're I guess they're mitigating inflation by bringing in thousands, million, millions of people. And uh, so th this will be tame, but it will run hot, I, I think. And um, if we cut off the 
immigration flowing into the border, this will probably explode. And we've got a real problem. So I think we've got a real problem. And we're just kicking the can, essentially. And PPI coming out on Thursday. So the next two days kind of be a little bit on the spicier side, more than likely. Could this cause a pullback? It may very well, especially if we rally today and hit the upside target. Could it cause a pullback tomorrow? Possibly. Might we kick that can on down the road? Yeah, it's possible. And then Friday, consumer sentiment after the market opens, along with financials reporting earnings before the market opens. So we'll see. We got banks kind of kicking it off here. We usually see money flow into financials and out of financials into big tech. And so that, that flow in has probably already occurred. Probably going to start seeing the flow out starting the next two days and into big tech. So big tech should be the stronger sector for the next week or two. And then we'll, we usually see that money flow out of big tech and disperse through the market into all other sectors. So it, it usually it's kind of like a we see this collection of funds flow into financials and then it jumps over to big tech and then it disperses back out into the market. Um, that's just kind of like the normal quarterly cycle we see almost every quarter. Now, it doesn't necessarily push prices huge up or anything like that, but it's a force where you see a little bump and then a little bump, you know, a little bump in financials, a little bump in tech, and then a dispersal. And sometimes that continues on. Sometimes it doesn't. Like, it's not necessarily a tradable thing, but you can watch the money flow. And it's interesting when you start tapping into the money flow, watching everything kind of move. So, XLE definitely been an outperformer. Definitely, definitely been an outperformer. And look at this. You may be like, JT, there's one of your roadmap bounces right there. And you would be right. And we would be up here at the target already, potentially going to extend to an even higher target at 102 right there. So might this be cooked for now? Uh, maybe. XLE could be finding resistance. Of course, it could be jumping up even higher. Jumping up even higher. This was a long consolidation we did from back here in November 22 all the way through the breakout right here in April. Dun, 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 dun. I'm just going to clear this chart up because I don't even remember what I was talking about back then. So if we look at this that high, that low, we could be heading to 100 and 107. That bigger pullback. This is just a small consolidation relatively inside this bigger consolidation. 100, 107. And then if we look even bigger, let's jump out to a weekly chart. Look at this. Dun, 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 dun. This is where it gets crazy. We'll be talking 121, 150. We're not even actually breaking out yet. Isn't that wild? Small outperformance here could lead to an outsize outperformance for a couple of years. So there you go. And the market's already open. Dun, 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 dun. Starting out strong. I like it. All right. Looking at ES really quickly to see what the overnight action looked like. Zoom her up, Buttercup. We kind of consolidated sideways all day yesterday, like I thought we, I kind of suggested we might. Now, if we could break out and get above that 618 of the large pullback we did from the end of March through first week of April, there, I guess, you know, last week, break above that 618. Sets us on a path to potentially rally up to this 5371 area on ES. And if we go look at the SPX chart, what does that look like? Dun, dun, dun. I got lots of lines on the chart. Sorry. For those that uh, like nice, clear, concise things, it's kind of the nature of the way I operate here. I got to have... Like, get rid of that freaking oval. Come on. Will not highlight that over. Come on. There we go. All right. Get that out of the way. 
So we held this support zone. We've got that resistance zone. We're about to break above it. I drew that yesterday, I think. Get above that. 52.31, 52.44. Then we tip our odds once we get above that 618 of the bigger pullback, which right there, that high, that low. Break above that 618, which we're right there. 52.20, right? Yeah, yeah, 52.20. Get above that and we're set up for a rally potentially up to 5,300, right up here. Now you may be like, how long would that take? I want to trade options. Well, that's difficult. Look how long this correction kind of took. It took us, we peaked out back here, 28th of March. We bottomed out 4th of April. That's a few days. So this could take three times longer, potentially. It could go fast, could take three times longer, could take us out to late April to get up there. We do some bumps and humps and pullbacks along the way. We could even extend it up to 53.39. And there's your path. Kind of getting ready to confirm it here. All right. Pretty sweet looking. Even this one kind of confirming right here. This this one looks pretty sweet also. And that high, that low. This is just dividing by 10, essentially. It's up to 52, or 529, possibly 533. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Check this out. Working on this new, look how, look how often this market roadmap thing bounce wins on this 30 minute chart. 73.8% of the time. Look at that. Look at that chart. A buy entry yesterday on that breakup of the 618. We're consolidating just under it. Might be an interesting trade. Just saying. All right. S5FI. Pulled back. It's funny. I, I The roadmap line doesn't even mean anything on this chart, but it pulled back right to it. Did it twice. We're, we're pretty cooked on the upside on the stocks above the 50-day. We are due a retrace down to the bottom. Uh... We can hang here indefinitely. We can hang here six months. We can hang here the rest of the year. Hang right up in this zone. Eventually, we're going to go visit the bottom. And it's going to be violent. But not today, apparently. And stocks about the 200-day. We kind of peaked out here. Now, I remind you, we peaked out back in 21 in April. And the market didn't actually top until right here in January of 22. And then we went down in a blaze of glory. Found the bottom in October. We actually bottomed out stocks above the 200 day or below, you know, this was stocks below the 200 day. We bottomed out right here in September, just before the actual bottom in October, like right in that first week of October. And then we haven't looked back, but it took us all the way, all the way till just now, just right at the flip of the month there to break above the 80 level. Even though it seems like this rally's been strong, it has not had the participation. This has not had the participation we had back here in 21. So if you feel like your stock that you picked hasn't been performing, there's a lot of stuff not quite performing to the level. And this one tends to oscillate too. So we usually, we tend to visit the bottom, we tend to visit the top, we tend to visit the bottom, we tend to visit the top, we tend to visit the bottom, we tend to visit the top. It's a giant market oscillator, and it takes a. This one moves nice and slow. S5 FI stocks about the 50 day, quite a bit faster, but we tend to bounce up and down here also. And if you want to go super fast, stocks about the 20 day, this one goes up and down really fast. We kind of dipped again. We haven't visited the bottom here since back here in October. Still on stocks about the 220 day. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway, um, I'll be live at 5 p.m. this evening taking your request. So if there's something I don't typically cover that you want me to cover, come visit me at 5 p.m. Make sure you set it in the set an alarm. And you know, I do this show every morning at 9.15. The list is not very long, so I was just kind of talking about the indexes, spend a little more time there. 
didn't look like we're going to have a banger of a day as far as wide participation, probably a narrow participation. Big tech still kind of going sideways. We've broken out of the channel and we may retest it from the bottom right here. If we hold that and turn down, that's an indication we're going down bigger right there. I do expect us to go retest the channel. If we break back in, we may rally back up to the top of the channel before we call this quits. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, look at that. IWM day trade. Fired off. <laughs> anyway. All right. Russell. Look at this. I think we're going to go test that 618 on the Russell. If we hold that, the initial sign we may be heading on down. This was a, could have been a top, initial move down, a retrace, and we could get a bigger move down. Something to watch right there. Could develop into something bigger on the downside. Kind of talked about that ad nauseum the last couple of weeks. Oil consolidating right up here. Right at that fib line. Next fib line up, 90 and 100 above that, basically. I'm expecting a visit of 100. I don't know if we get a retrace first or we just go ripping off. It's kind of, I started talking about energy to begin with and CL right here, that's energy. NG1 exclamation point, that's energy. This is showing some strength. The roadmap line up here, that's the resistance. Got already still stones. We could rally up in there. We may just fart around sideways until later in the year, just like we did up here. I talked about this a couple days, that this pattern that we set up right here last year, and we dipped in February, we ripped just a couple, like a week later, we ripped in the beginning of March, went down, made another low in April, and we just kind of drifted back higher until October. We kind of dipped into February, ripped into March, dipped into late March, not quite into April. And we may drift higher out here till October. Could go faster. I mean, we could top in August because it seems to be going just a little faster. But that pattern, almost the same pattern, just a lot smaller, a lot smaller scale. Um, that's kind of what I have in mind that we're gonna, just going to drift higher for a little while on natural gas. I'll talk about that more in the evening, this evening at 5 p.m. Gold just keeps rocking, baby. Expect 2,400. Really, I'm looking for 2,500 to 3,000. We could just go epically higher. There's a short squeeze going on in China. They had a spot price of $2,700. That would be up here for those of you keeping track. They had a spot price equivalent of $2,700 in China. Yesterday or day before yesterday, I can't, uh, becomes a blur. So that's a large discrepancy gap. So that's a short, I mean, that's like it's a supply squeeze, basically. There, there's a limited supply and people are buying the crap out of it. That's a large gap in there. I mean, we, we could be talking an, a nice 15% upside, you know, 14%, 15%. So that's pretty, pretty wild and hanging out there. This is indicative of the kind of thing I was talking about. And uh, the bigger question, is gold tipping the hand that the powers that be expect inflation to keep going? Are we just going to inflate worldwide currency? Have we gotten to the point where there's no more safe haven currency? The Swiss franc broke. The Japanese yen broke as safe havens. The dollar now being devaluated by gold prices just and oil prices probably just going crazy. And uh, we may we may find a new new stasis level. You know, oil has been kind of hovering around that $70 level for a long time, but what if we go make it like three times more? You know, 200 bucks is now the the normal level for a price of oil, a barrel of oil. What if gold jumps up to $10,000 is the new 
kind of thousand dollars. What if it jumps up to twenty thousand? Where I mean, like twenty five would be the historical average price of gold versus the, you know, for looking at the market cap of gold, typically it is five percent of all the rest of the of the assets. Five five percent of worldwide assets that would put gold roughly at twenty five thousand dollars an ounce. That's the historical average for like all of humanity. We're way below that right now. If we ramp up to where it return just returns to the mean, we're talking like twenty five thousand dollar gold. That'd be crazy. Bitcoin found a little resistance, but. Should be confirming the move that we're probably, I mean, we're 70% likely we're going to go visit the 77,000 target right up here. Kind of set it up here. We did the retrace to the 618, held it, moved up, made the higher high, getting a little retrace. Well on the way. Having event coming up right out here in April 19th. And right here, BitcoinHaving.com, 10 days roughly. That works. That's the 19th. 1500 blocks to go if you're like how do you find out the blocks mempool that space right here you can watch the blocks get mined we're running quite a bit ahead right now 3.59 percent ahead and in about 32 hours they're going to adjust the difficulty the algorithm that you know manages bitcoin that everybody agrees to operate under is going to change the difficulty that's going to change roughly april 10th tomorrow at about 6 p.m and it's probably going to get about 3.59% more difficult to mine Bitcoin. Wow, look at all those little bitty transactions. Holy moly. That's unusual. You don't see, you don't usually see that many small transactions in one of these blocks lately. Hey, look how many big transactions were in this block. Big chunks of bytes, I guess you would say. It's interesting. Anyway, moving on. There, we're getting some bigger ones jumped in there. It's a lot of little baby ones. It's really interesting to me. I, I find it interesting to watch these sometimes. And you can see high, high priority, low priority. That's uh, how much you're willing to pay to get your virtual byte. And it's based on virtual bytes of the block, not on actual transactions. But yeah, you know, transaction takes a certain amount of virtual bytes in the new block. There's only so many bytes available. So there you go. That's you wonder about the blockchain. There's the blocks that get mined, blocks of transactions. And it's a chain of blocks because every block that comes after relies on the block before. All these blocks are going to rely on the blocks that get mined out here. Already. So the race is on to get to the having. Coming up, about 1,500 blocks left to go. The countdown is on. This is just BitcoinHaving.com if you wonder how to get here. So that date coming up roughly Friday, April 19th. 10 days away. Next week. Next week. We're getting there. We might pop. And then if we get up here, we very well could see a pullback after having. Having itself doesn't change anything. It's just there's less supply hitting the market every 10 minutes. It doesn't really change anything fundamentally. So we may get a pullback as people are disappointed. Then that supply of Bitcoin hitting the market kind of kicks in sometime later. And usually that effect takes 200 to 200, I mean, 220 to 240 days before we actually feel it in the market, which puts us out here. I guess I removed my other vertical line. Pick right here, about right there. That could be, we may go through a dip and a rally back in that period of time before we go crazy out here into 2025. Now, anything can happen in here. It's just one of the things to be cognizant of. The typical, the typical length of time after having, before we start really going exponential, it's about 220 to 240 days, which is roughly right about there. That's about 230 days. Just go like this. Having right there. Yeah, 230 days. See, look at that. Pretty, 
pretty dang close. Got close enough for for charting. So it may be about that time before we see the big up actually kick in in Bitcoin. So if you're not in a position where you can kind of suffer some pullback, you might want to lighten the load while we're up here before the halving happens. All right, take your action now. Now, could it just go crazy up? You betcha. You betcha. And we could just launch off here and never look back. Entirely possible. But the chart's indicating we're probably going to get a pullback. Well, let's be honest about it. Technical, technically, technical analysis-wise, looks like we're probably going to get a pullback. Ethereum still holding that resistance. It's got to be very cautious here. Still holding that resistance. That move could be down here. Look, this move right here. That's the first move down. If we project it off of where we are currently, puts us right there. It's not magic. Yeah, one, two, three, correction, ABC. Dollar hanging out right at the roadmap line. I, we're 70% likely to go tag this up here. 70% likely. Now, at this point, let's just remove a few things. And look at this current low to high retrace. We could go just a little deeper and set this up. So we could push down into this zone right here. Fully test that, do a 618 retrace. That makes a measured bounce. What I call a measured bounce. And then we could set this up for a rally right up into that zone. And it could go pretty quickly. Could, could. It's like a 105.50. And you may be like, how do you trade the dollar? Well, there's lots of ways. Like UUP was, is a common way right here. So there's an option. I don't usually trade the dollar directly. I just use it as an indication on other things. And look at this craziness. This thing was popping earlier. Now it's dropping as the market opens. Just this, not enough candles to do anything with. New stuff. Uh, I don't even know what this is, but it looks like a investment trust mutual fund thing. Mutual funds don't move like that. First off. And secondly, newly, new, I don't even, it's not an IPO. So IPOs are typically bearish. This is something else. I'm not even sure what the heck it is. I'd have to go dig in, but that probably going to retrace. FNGU, find a lot of resistance right here. Looks a lot like the QQQ chart. Broke down out of the channel, back tested the channel. See, this kind of indicating ahead of time that, Big tech with a leverage way, moving a little faster since it's 3x leverage. Indicate when we're broke out of the channel, back test of the channel, drifting away from the channel, we may break down. Be careful. FLUT. Oh, right back down. We scratched the target and then right back to the roadmap line. This is actually setting up a new trade. New trade potential. Right there, right there. Looking for a gap fill. Get above that could set us up for 236, possibly 248 on the upside. Strawberry Dream talking back to me. Whew. All right. Biotech. No, thank you. Biotech Pharma, MedTech, whatever you want to call it. No, thank you. I'm not messing with it. Look, we did this before. Like heartbeat. Boop. Reverse split. That's a dumpster fire. Boop. Probably coming back down here once again. How long? I don't know. It could take a couple. Of, it could take a year. It could be. You know, we could pop up in here, and then take a year. It could be next year before we get back down here again. Don't mess with that. It, it, it's just not reliable. You can get burned faster than you can think about it. TSM. That. That may have been all the consolidation we need. I, I would like it better if we pull back to the roadmap line. We don't have to. It certainly doesn't have to go that low. The breakout of this whole big consolidation, we tried. We retraced. Finding some support. Trying again. If we can get the move, that's 168. 
look at the smaller consolidation we just did right here. Yeah, supports that move up there to 168. The entry above 150, looking for that 160, 160 to 168 area right up in there. AR, ACRV, another biomedtech pharmaceutical thing. Lots of these show up when the uh, when the list is small. And the list was quite small today. ELF, Elf Beauty, hit that crazy extension back in the vicinity. And I'm actually going to send an alert. I've got a grudge on this one. This one went lower for longer than I planned, and then it went right up through all my targets. I may find a position on this for the next move up. Right here, looking for a bottom somewhere down here. Turn back above, 196, looking for 241, 265. And uh, Major John, I don't really actually care. <laughs> I talk about it, but I don't actually care. Yeah, it sounds crazy speculative and just a bunch of crap. Uh, dangerous. Dangerous is what that sounds like. So, And the chart looks dangerous. Uh, that's on the... He's talking about the DX... D X Y Z, Destiny X Y Z, N T E S, stuck in the range, hasn't really done anything at all, nothing at all. That's the high, that's the low, just stuck in the middle. Talk about something boring, like I'm. Nothing even, nothing even remotely interesting. The roadmap line's gone flat. It's just kind of sitting there. If you want the roadmap line, you're interested in this orange line and the simplistic, simplistic way to look at the markets. The link is in the description. Click the more button, expand it down. It's like five bucks. Get this thing, throw it on your chart. And uh, I mean, if you're super cheap, like five bucks is just too much for you. I have a video from like a year ago, maybe it's a year and a half ago where I gave you the code. If you're swooped enough to put the code in yourself in the Pine Editor, I threw up the code on the video, but if you just want the easy button, it's like five bucks. Anyway. DLR. That could have been enough retrace to go higher again. Like, in all honesty here, like we've missed the roadmap line. This will be the third time in a row. So could we go on extension? Sure. That extension pushing above the 148 area. And it just means that the we didn't hit it on the daily. We hit it on the four hour. See? Touch here, extension, touch here, extension, touch here, extension, 159. Missing on the daily just means we probably touched on a lower time frame. So there you go. Set up right there. That's you know, rewind of what I was talking about right here. A while back, <laughs> at the beginning of the show, I was talking about how the 30 minute tagged and had the entry for my market roadmap system here. So it's all about what time frame are you trading on? So there you go. I typically stay on the daily just for simplicity stay, sake on big moves. Uh, I like big moves. So, you know, big moves, big money. DLR could be heading up to 159, 165, but we really want to see that move up through, get a daily close above 148 before we go after that. WDC, breaking above, but I am cautious. We've done that before. Lasted a few days, and we came back down with a vengeance. So watch for, I mean, that, that was like a crazy exponential thing. It was back there in 2018. Crazy little exponential thing right here in 2024. It's been like six years since we did that. Could lead to another six years of consolidation. Ugh, not the kind of chart that I want to mess with. Look, I mean, look how long this has been doing this stupid stuff. It peaked back here in 2014. That's 10 years ago. This is a descending set of highs. Do you really want to get involved in this? I don't see a lot of opportunity at the moment. Now, if it confirms by moving up, retracing, holding, you know, back testing this basically, you know, up, up, not back testing like back, te like, like back testing the 
trend line. You know? And then we do this part. This is where I'm interested in the trade, right over in this area, right here. This is where I would be hunting a trade after we've done this. Then we have a big upside potential. If we just go ripping off now, big deal. It wasn't a high probability setup. This makes it a high probability setup. And I feel very confident about putting a little, maybe a bigger position on. Now, with the way everything looks cooked, I don't know if it's going to do it. It could just do another six years of consolidation before we go again. Like this one didn't do the test. It just crushed down. That's why you got to wait for the push up, the back test of the trend line, and then the go. And quite possibly, that's the trend line, and we're just, we haven't even actually tested it yet. So, depends on where you want to, where you want to line it up. Are we on this? Where it was like that consolidation? Oh, oh, breaking out potentially could crush it down. So, anyway, I'm going to put it back where I had it. LASE. Not a weekly chart. That, I don't know. Doesn't get me excited about that chart. The big pop, but it's under 10 bucks. Under 10 bucks stuff doesn't always follow my pattern. So moving on. Google, almost to the 161 target. Look at that. That was a roadmap bounce. Freaked a couple people out there on that retrace, but here it goes. 161, that's the upside target. After we get there, 169 above that, but it may, 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 may do this back one more time before we do that. Could just go ripping off, but usually we do this kind of ping pongy thing. Ping pong between the fibs. GDXU, all right, you want to leverage some gold miners. Big potential here. This thing has been consolidating. This is a declining asset, though. I'll be very careful. And it's leveraged. So, But if you want to 3x your gains on GDX or GDXU. And look at that baby go. GDXU or GDXJ, I mean. The junior minus. We have a potential for 47 here. And that one has a potential not drawn. That high, that low. Looking for a 39, possibly 42 on that one. LABU. See, here we go. This, this is exactly what I was just talking about on, on Western Digital. We broke above, came back, retest, and we got below. Oh, this is probably going on down. Got below the roadmap line at this point. What does that set us up for? That low, that high. Right here is support. We get below this zone right in here. Probably coming down here. New low, 13. Look, that was a reverse split, all right? Reverse splits, not bullish. This thing may not end up bullish. Be careful. S-E-N-G. Sagnoma. Oh. I know what these guys do. I have equipment from these guys. I didn't even know they were public. That's funny. They provide uh, communications as a service. Yeah, they provide voice over IP equipment. Bought a bunch of their stuff in the past. Chart looks pretty crap. Don't have anything great to say about the chart. Anyway, MSTR. Probably on the path back to the robot blind. More than likely. Hey, look, it's a clear pattern. We did it over here. We did it back here. Did the extension. Time for the retrace. LMT. Not interesting. Not even a little bit. KOLD. That looks like it's coming back. Ultra short natural gas looks like it's coming back. We've got a split coming up. It may end up being 
gnarly right there. GD. Wow. That's just straight up. Look at that. Not much to do there. Right past the 1618. Probably due for a retrace at some point. Last kind of, I mean, that you could kind of count, but the last even small consolidations right here in September, we've just been straight up on General Dynamics. They make weapons. Um, it's, uh, I mentioned that there may be some winners in weapons as we got into this Ukraine thing. And looks like General Dynamics, the big winner. LMT, not. V I N C Pharma. Another one of those stupid pops and a drop right back. Like this is what this is what I warn on these pharma things when we, we do these crazy pops. Look at this. Right back down at the bottom. Don't mess with that stuff. Don't mess with that stuff. Biotech Pharma. Stay away from it. I N M D. Going down in a blaze of glory. Right there, 16 on the downside. Could go 13 below that. NEOG going down in the blaze of glory. Seven. That, you know, the sucky thing is by the time they set these up, like there, there's not a lot of room to make money. Not really. And this could take a little while. I mean, it could take like out here. That's probably where it's heading. All right. Buys for the day. Optimistically looking for that new high, but we may just hold sideways again today. Waiting for the CPI numbers tomorrow. Get a little bit of retrace there. Not the kind of price action I wanted to see today. I wanted to see this get confirmation breaking above and keep going, but still holding between the resistance zones. Look, I mean... Let's zoom it up even. Make it even bigger. Here's the zones. Right here. Right here. That was the zones from yesterday. Still the zones from today. We may keep hanging. If we get above or below, it sets the direction. But until we do, sideways, baby. Simple as that sometimes. Simple as that. All right, everybody. I'll be back at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Going live again, take your requests. I, the funny thing about a request show is I need people to show up to do requests to make it an awesome show. So make sure you set your reminder. Just click the bell with the notifications if you want to get not notified by YouTube that um, I'm live. And I'll see you later. Be careful out there. The account you save may be your own. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being a supporter. Remember, if I said anything that was helpful, give me a like on the video. And I'll see you in Discord if you want to. Come hang out with me. You know, the other advantage of buying the $5 thing, you get in Discord. You get to come hang out with the community of like-minded traders.